Okay, welcome to part D, and in this part of discussing elasticity, we're going to see what happens along a straight line demand curve. What happens to the price elasticity of demand? And so, in order to do that, let's suppose we have an equation of a line, uh, and suppose the equation is price equals 12 minus 2Q. Price equals 12 minus 2Q might be a demand function and 12 minus 2q the y-intercept is going to start here at when quantity equals 0 price is 12 price equals 12 minus 2q the slope is minus 2 and so the um, line is going to go down 2 over 1 down 2 over 1 and the x-intercept will be 6 so that's if we have a demand curve right here. 12, P equals 12 minus 2Q. So once we graph this demand function and we know that it's a straight line, basically what you need to understand you know, about this, if you're, if you're not used to having a demand function like this, is that at a price of $12, people will buy no units of this product. If the price falls down to over 1, that's the slope of minus 2, uh, people will buy one unit at $10, two units at $8, three units at $6, and so on. It gives us a convenient way to see a lot of different points, uh, prices, and quantities to calculate elasticities. And so the way I like to do this is to line up the quantities here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and we're going to calculate these uh, arc elasticities between each two quantities 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6 as the quantities go up the price goes down and so we can put in our prices here quantity 0 price 12 and the price goes down to every time the quantity goes up one so we can just fill in these quantities here and if the price was zero dollars the quantity I would want is six if this was my demand for a product now this arc elasticity formula this is the formula we've been looking at where we have two different prices or and two different quantities and we want to calculate percent change in quantity and percent change in price right here at the bottom to calculate the price elasticity of demand and just recall that to calculate a percent change in anything we just look at the change divide it by the average between the two multiplied times a hundred and so that's what I'm going to do over here in a table is I'll do the first one quickly uh, slowly and then I'll do the, the others more quickly now here instead of the delta for change I just have the letter C because in, in Excel putting in a delta is, is kind of a pain so percent change in quantity now I'm only going to use the um, blanks down here at the bottom and what I'm going to do here is put when quantity goes from 0 to 1 right here I'm going to put the percent change in quantity so we just percent change in quantity we just have to look at the formula down here for percent change what is the change in quantity between 0 and 1 well it went up 1 so the top of this percent change is going to be plus 1 what is the average quantity between 0 and 1 0 plus 1 is 1 divide it by 2 you get a half and so for percent change in quantity here I'll type it in Excel as a formula equals 1 that's the top because the quantity changed by 1 divided by the average which is a half Ty, uh, so divided by 0.5 and then we that gives us 2 we need to multiply that times uh, 100 so put that in parentheses to make sure and multiply that times 100 and we're saying that's a 200% change in quantity, the way these formulas are. Oh, I was going to put it down here. Okay, so let me do that. Now, let's do the percent change in price. 
when the quantity goes from 0 to 1, down here on the x-axis, 0 to 1, the price goes from, whoop, my line got messed up. Let me move it a little here. Okay. When the quantity goes from 0 to 1, the price goes from 12 down to 10. So, same formula. Percent change in price is change in price divided by the average price. The change in price from 12 to 10 is down 2, or minus 2. So the change in price is down 2. Divide that by the average price between 12 and 10. 12 plus 10 is 22. Divided by 2 is 11. So, so let's enter the formula in here. Uh, equals 100 times minus 2 divided by the average of uh, 11. And so we see an 18.18% change, decrease in price. And so if we divide the quantity, percent change in quantity by the price, we'll get the elasticity. So it equals J5 divided by K5 in Excel here. We get an elasticity of minus 11, which is very elastic. That means that for each 1% change in price, we see an 11 times as large 11% change in quantity. And so let's calculate the next one, and then uh, I'll quickly fill out the rest of the table while you need to practice these to make sure you know how to do it. So right here, when we go from a quantity of 1 to 2, we go from a price of 10 to 8. And so percent change in quantity uh, is the change. Well, I'm going to do equals 100 times first, and then do the change in quantity divided by the average. Well, we're changing from 1 to 2, so that's a change of 1. Divided by the average between 1 and 2 is 1 and a half, giving us a 66.6666% change in quantity. And over here equals 100 times. The price is going from 10 to 8. That's down 2, divided by the average price of 9. OK, so that elasticity right here is going to be uh, 66 divided by 22, which is going to give us 3. So it equals uh, J6 divided by K6 and 3. So a little less elastic as we move from the top of the demand curve a little bit uh, lower. And so I'm going to calculate the rest of these. I suggest you pause the video and do the same, and then we can see the pattern. Okay, I've filled out the rest of the table, and you see as we move down, over here on the graph also, as we move down the demand curve from higher to lower prices and from lower quantities to higher quantities, this is the pattern you always see with elasticity that you're very elastic at the top and very inelastic at the bottom and kind of in the middle in the middle right here. So now if you have a demand curve that is, is truly a curved shape, this pattern will not be the same. Uh, there are actually curves where the elasticity is the same everywhere, which I'll actually show you later on in a more advanced lecture. But if it's a straight line, if demand is a straight line, then the elasticity will be very elastic at the top, inelastic at the bottom, and it will be unit elastic somewhere in the middle. Now what if I asked you to guess, where would the elasticity be exactly equal to minus 1? Well, it should be between where it's minus 1.4 and minus 0.7. And if you guessed it would be exactly right here at a price of 6 and a quantity of 3, you would be right. And it so happens that another thing that's important to know about a demand line is that exactly halfway down, if the y-intercept is $12, exactly halfway down at $6, that's where the price elasticity of demand will be exactly unit elastic minus one. Now the last thing we need to cover quickly is what happens to total revenue along this demand curve price times quantity and I'm going to calculate that over here multiplying the quantity times the price. Okay as you see I've just multiplied up here a price of 12 times a quantity of zero it gives me no revenue for my business. Uh, but as we move down to a quantity of 1 and a price of 10, our total revenue is $10. Now, where is it that the total revenue is the largest? Well, it happens to be at a quantity of 3 and a price of 6, 
which is exactly that point where we uh, said that the uh, price elasticity of demand is minus one. And it also turns out that that will always be true for a linear demand curve. Your um, maximum of your total revenue is going to be right here in the middle where the price elasticity of demand is equal to minus one. And this is an important thing to understand and try to remember as you go through an economics class because sometimes you'll want to know where that biggest total revenue point is. But a word of caution, you don't necessarily want to charge this price because it won't make your profit biggest it will just make your total revenue as uh, large as possible and we'll actually prove this later on that this price is where the elasticity is minus one in the next lecture and we'll prove that this is the biggest total revenue as well